pasta. I'm making pasta for dinner. I'm making pasta for Valentine's Day. A lot of you guys know that pasta is one of my favorite types of treat meals, which we'll get into that topic today. And so I'm going to be making homemade pasta. Shout out to studying abroad in Italy. Now, this is actually a surprise for what I'm doing for Trevor right now on making the homemade pasta. So don't tell him. I mean, he's probably gonna watch my video. Right. But this really brings up a really great question on when it comes to cheat days or treat meals or whatever you want to call it. Is it something that you should be doing? Will it help you achieve your goals? Yada, yada, yada. So you may already know what I'm going to say just because I'm making pasta. But I'm going to go over all the science because you guys know me. Can't knock over the science. So I'm going to be talking about why treat days, not cheat days, are actually really great for helping you achieve your wellness goal. Okay. If you don't already know who I am, I'm Autumn. I'm a certified clinical nutritionist and it's my passion to help you feel amazing by eating the foods that actually make you feel good. And one really big part of that that we tend to forget about is actually enjoying our food. And that's why I'm a big advocate of making sure that the healthy food you make isn't just like those meal prep types of things you see on Instagram where it's like all organized and split up into the little sections, you know what I'm talking about, but actually having meals that taste good too. Now that's a whole topic in itself, but part of that is making sure that, you know, you also have the meals that maybe don't satisfy that wellness goal that you're going for, but it helps you just emotionally feel more fulfilled. So for me, my health journey started with helping to reduce my anxiety. And that means making sure that my blood glucose levels are as stable as they possibly can be. Now having pasta on the regular, which I don't know if you guys have ever made pasta from scratch, but you like use these little thing, make a little well with the eggs and the flour and all that fun. Anyway, having that on the regular is not going to help my anxiety. It'll just make it worse. But I love pasta. I studied abroad in Italy, studied the Mediterranean diet there. I was really exposed to a lot of pasta and pizza, which I also love homemade pizza, but that's another story. So for me, even though having anxiety is so terrible for my own well-being it also would be a complete bummer to just totally never have homemade pasta again especially homemade because you know I enjoy making it I enjoy the whole process and then sharing that with those that I love and there's actually a study that I've mentioned quite a few times within my channel on how having these scheduled treat days are actually really beneficial for helping us to stay more focused on our actual goals it also makes it so that we're more likely to stick with our goals and those action steps for those goals goals long term, which that totally makes sense. I talk to my clients about this all the time, where if you think like, okay, I'm totally cutting out pasta, never having pasta again, that makes you only think about pasta. And that also then causes decision fatigue. So not only are you bummed out because you can't have some of the things that you love, but you also are more likely to binge on those foods when you do end up having that decision fatigue break, which will inevitably, inevitably, inevitably happen. <laughs> so what the study found is that having one day a week where you actually schedule some type of meal that's not actually in line with your goals but helps to satisfy that emotional happiness actually helps you to stay on track with those goals longer and p.s this study was actually studying weight loss and the people who had those scheduled treat days actually lost the same amount of weight as those who didn't so they're happier and they ended up getting the same result okay but the key point here that you have to remember is it's a planned treat. I don't use the word cheat. I use the word treat instead. So treat, T-R-E-A-T, -E not cheat, C-H-E-A-T. Yeah. This is a huge distinction. It's a huge thing to remember and keep in mind because cheat implies you're doing something wrong. It automatically makes you feel guilty. And when you have that guilt, that can increase your stress hormone cortisol, which actually makes it so that you end up gaining weight around your belly, which you can't see if I'm tapping my... There. because you were feeling so guilty in the first place about eating that cheat meal. Now, on the other hand, a treat is exactly as what it implies. A treat is something where it's like a special occasion. You celebrate those treats. It's an exciting thing. So therefore, you don't have those spikes in cortisol when you have those treat types of days or meals because you have changed your outlook on what it is that you're calling it. It's not a cheat, it's a treat. One of the most important things that you need to keep in mind when it comes to a treat meal is to make sure that it's scheduled. That's what the study pointed out, helps to make those people more successful with actually sticking with their goals is that they scheduled in that treat meal. So it doesn't necessarily have to be like, you know, you put it on your Google calendar and you send an invite. Although that works for you, then fine. But for example, what I do is I know on Friday nights, I don't want to cook. So my boyfriend and I tend to go out to eat and then we go to the movies after. And we will have something that we really enjoy, but we know won't necessarily make us feel good if we have it all the time. So in my circumstance, it's very often pasta or pizza. Now for Trevor, my boyfriend, he actually loves this like breaded type of Parmesan and ricotta thing 
Oh my god, I'll see if I can find a picture and put it right here. It's actually incredible and crazy. But the key thing is, we know that Friday nights are our nights where we're just going to have something that we just truly enjoy. It's not necessarily going to make us feel good, but it, we're going to enjoy that meal while we're having it and satisfy that more emotional type of need for certain types of foods. Now here's a second really important thing to keep in mind when it comes to having that treat. Now, you have to enjoy it. And this may seem like something obvious, but think about this. Just getting a box of Oreos and sitting and mindlessly eating it while watching some Netflix show, that's actually going to end up making it so that you don't enjoy it as much because your full attention isn't on whatever, you know, the Oreo cookies, which I don't know. But it also makes it so that you end up eating more because you aren't putting your full attention into what you're eating. So you enjoy it less and you eat more. Now this also comes into play to making just more mindful choices about the food that's going into your body. For example, I'm not a huge fan of cake. So if I'm at like a wedding or a birthday, I'm not going to eat it just because I can because you know, it might be one of those scheduled treat days where I know I'm going to eat something that's outside of my normal types of habits because I don't enjoy cake. So I'm not going to eat it just because it's there. And that's something you have to keep in mind. This is about mindfulness, eating things that you truly enjoy and not just eating it because it's there. And that's something I sort of had to wrap my head around as well because I used to, you know, back in college, I was a big like tortilla chips and crackers types of type of person. <laughs> and that is definition mindless eating. I also played some video games back in the day and I, fun fact, was on Wipeout. If you don't know what it is, I'm just gonna link below. I'm gonna see if I can find a video on this so you can check it out. And so on Wipeout, my whole persona was that I was like a gamer. But anyway, total side note. But when I would be, you know, studying or maybe playing video games because I did play a lot of video games in college, I would just mindlessly eat tortilla chips. And yeah, I like tortilla chips, but it's not something where I'm like, oh my gosh, I love tortilla chips. It's something that's just a mindless type of food where I'm not really focusing on what it is that I'm eating. It's just there. And it's that habit, that motion of just almost like an addictive type of motion rather than something that I love. So this whole concept of like a treat meal is really to help you also to hone in on what it is that you love, what it is that makes you happy and being more mindful about the foods that you do eat and in order to feel your best. Because ultimately that's what this is. It's helping to build those habits to make sure that you are giving your body the fuel that you need in order to feel your best, which is so important because nobody wants to feel bad. So what I recommend for these treat days or treat meals is making it an experience. So rather than just, like I said, getting a bag of chips and, and watching TV and having that be your treat, instead, really think about what you love to eat. And if that's some awesome garlic on at your favorite Indian restaurant, go out to eat. Go enjoy some time spent with your loved ones and enjoy that garlic naan to its fullest. Put all your attention on that garlic naan. I'm using this example because I just did this last Friday. Or if ice cream is something you love, don't just buy a pint and sit at home. Go out, maybe try a new type of ice cream shop, try a new flavor, be with friends, just do something to make it more of an experience. Or if you are going to bring it home, again, just don't sit in front of the TV and eat the ice cream sit there and just fully enjoy eating the ice cream. Fully being in the moment, fully enjoying that food or drink or whatever it is and not feeling guilty about it because having those foods that also make you happy is a part of life too. We shouldn't feel restricted, but we should also know that we wanna fuel our body with foods that help to make us feel good the majority of the time so that we can feel good. And then to have that emotional aspect where we eat something like the, pa the homemade pasta that I'm gonna be doing. The biggest takeaway, plan your weekly treat day. Really think about what it is that you enjoy eating or something Something that you know you would miss if you totally cut out. And remember, you don't have to cut those out. Just plan accordingly. And then third, be mindful throughout the process. Really enjoy the food you're eating. Make it an experience. Go out with friends. Maybe make it yourself so you see the process of what goes into it. But just really making it an experience and being mindful in the situation. If you want to learn more about how certain foods can actually affect our hormones and how we feel, I recommend you check out this video. And if you love science-backed information on how to feel your best, make sure you subscribe right here. I come out with new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Alright guys, happy Valentine's Day and I will see you soon.